Hello everyone, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to a piece of free software called Chord Pulse Lite. This software actually enables simple backing tracks to be generated um, and very easily too. The interface is extremely intuitive and it's very simple to use. Okay, let's Automatically it comes up with a, a C chord there when you first launch it, so let's listen to that chord. Oh, let me stop it. Now you notice that it cycles, we don't really want it to do that. And that's because up here it says repeat all. So I'm going to change that by clicking it. It now says repeat page, I don't want that either. I want one more click which makes it say repeat off. So now when it's played that through it will stop. Now you'll notice there is a drum beat intro and that is because up here I have pre-count on and I want that on. Okay now I'm going to do springies here and I've organized the chords for the tune in a uh, uh, a particular fashion, dividing it into segments. So I'm going to try and produce these segments. On, I'm going to have these segments on each page. So the first page I'm on, page one, I will call that the intro and that is C A minor, C A minor. So if I want to put a new chord in, I go to the right hand side of the last chord and I say I want an A and it's minor. I can now go to the right hand of that and say I want one C and I can go to the right hand side of that and say I want another A minor. OK, so let's hear what we've got. OK, that's easy enough. But the rhythm isn't the style of the of the of the music isn't correct for spring is nearly here. So if I go up to style up here, I can select slow rock, and slow rock is pretty much near the rhythm. But for spring is nearly here, they only last um, half a bar per chord. So I'm going to reduce the size of these chords down to half a bar. This should then start sounding a little bit more like the backing for spring is here. OK, let's try that. OK, that's fine, but the tempo is a little bit slow. So let me increase the tempo to say 80. OK, so that's the first section or page dealt with. Now I need another page which I'm going to put this middle section in. So to create a new page I go to the right hand side of the last one, the same as I did for the chord. I'll call it page 2 and it gives me a blank page. But it keeps the style and it keeps the tempo. OK, so now I can put these chords in it click automatically is with me a C by default. I'm now going to have an A minor, which is the next one in the list, and then a D minor, and a G seventh. And I'm going to shrink these down to half a bar, as I did before. And here I'm clicking and dragging and dropping when it gets to the right size. Let me hear this page. If I click play now, it will only play from the start of this page. It won't do the preceding page. OK. Now, if I 
click the first uh, chord and then holding the shift down I click the last chord it will highlight all of those chords uh, what I want to do is to copy those and repeat them because you will see in this structure C A minor D minor G seventh is repeated here so this is a quick way of doing it so if I from there say copy click into the next field and say uh, mm, I'll say paste on the right because what I shouldn't have done is clicked in that place I should have uh, simply done the paste and it wouldn't have put this chord in there so this particular chord I'm going to delete so just highlight it and push the delete key okay let's continue now then so we're up to that G seventh we have now got C C seventh F F minor oops F minor C G and C and I'm going to leave that last one blank because we do in fact need a pause now that is in fact the maximum number of notes I can put in here using 8 bars to a page I can in fact reduce that uh, increase it rather to 16 bars a page by clicking this entry up here and I can put a lot more in but that in fact is all I need on this page so let's play it all right the way through I'll go back to page 1 and we'll play it all the way through so far Okay, now what I need now is another page of exactly the same content because this happens twice. So I'm going to click to the right hand side and I'm going to say I need page 2. So what has actually happened, I've now got three pages, page 1, page 2 and an identical page 2. So this in fact is the sequence that the pages are going to be played. So the next page I need to do is the middle eight, which is this section here. So we'll call that page three, which at the moment is blank, so it gives me a blank page, and I can now produce this, this set of chords. So we're going to have a D minor followed by a G seventh. Let me reduce them down to half size. And once it starts with them half size, then it will continue that way. Now I want a C, an A minor, a D minor, a G seventh, a C, another C. A D minor, G seventh, C, A minor, E minor, E minor, D minor. and a G7. There we go. What I'll do now is I'll take a break and I'll finish this pattern off so that we have the whole song. Okay, I'm back again and I've completed this uh, backing track and I've now added these other pages. I've now got page 2 again 
and a final page which just uh, finishes the thing off the last few chords so there I've done all of the chords that you need and that makes a perfectly good backing track and a little bit later on I'll play it through using that track for you and uh, you can make your own mind up how it sounds it's not hi-fi it's MIDI um, it's not real instruments uh, but to my way of thinking it's something I, I will uh, play with now and again I'm likely to use it too much on YouTube but it but it does help me if if I can't find a backing track anywhere now let me show some other things and I'll to do that I'll have another um, instance of chord plus light running just with the C chord in there now you can do some other things with it let me just show you uh, this is going to repeat because I wrapped it in that way and you can hear a bass note going and a chord playing along with drums if I click on here I can bring up uh, a bass line. Now the bass line is playing automatically but what I can do is transpose that bass to a higher level by clicking on that area and producing a little arrow and I can demonstrate this because I'll put an ordinary C there with no change and now I'll run the two together you'll see what the effect is. So the bass is actually rising and falling an octave. <clears throat> now then, the chord also can be transposed in the same way. So up here, I can transpose, let's stick with the first C chord. I will make that go a higher chord. It's the same C chord, but the equivalent of paying further up the fret. And I can increase that a little bit. I can make it transpose two levels up. Now I'm just telling you this because I think it's a useful um, tool to make the, the backing track sound a little better. I'm not going to bother in this example to go through and identify where these uh, changes could improve the situation, but uh, that's why I'm including it in here so you know they do exist. Um, I think all these other things are fairly obvious what they do. The volume controls to put the drums louder or the bass quieter or the chords lower, whatever you want to do. You can change the tempo. There's a, a fairly high number of um, uh, different styles that you can use to produce your own backing tracks. Uh, I think it's a lovely, a lovely little bit of free software. Now there is a chord pulse which uh, is about, I think it was $21 if you want to buy it. and that uh, helps you with things like drum breaks or chord breaks uh, to help you finish off and start your piece a little bit uh, cleaner. Um, but uh, you know it's there uh, if you feel that you really get into this. Oh, by the way, that also offers considerably more styles um, uh, so uh, you get far, far more choice in, in the styles you're playing. Hey, but I hope you find that uh, useful and uh, I'll uh, follow this by giving a little demonstration of um, Spring is nearly here um, with me playing lead. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye bye.